Thank you. Welcome. Hello. Welcome, everyone. Here we are tonight together. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, friends, investors, neighbors, all of you. For those of you who don't know us, Welcome to the amazing opportunity to connect to the, our world through the lens of the Hunger Project. Ours is a lens that holds all people as valued and valuable, as brothers and sisters, including you. So I'm thrilled to be with you here in California where the Hunger Project started 42 years ago. And celebrating the events of this weekend here on the West Coast is very significant and meaningful. It's a return to source. Our organization was born in transformation and born for transformation, for shifting our human context and transforming the way we think about and relate to one another. I'm talking about shifting the way the world thinks about poverty and hunger the way we think about and relate to people living in hunger, the way men think about and treat women, the way women think about and relate to men, themselves, and each other, how we think about youth, refugees, and those people, talking about shifting our own limiting beliefs about what we're capable of as a little individual. In 1977, one in five of our fellow human beings were hungry. And the prevailing context in the world at that time was that hunger was an inevitable fact of life, impossible to change. And during the early years of the Hunger Project, many of you joined us during the huge enrollment phase where we worked to distinguish chronic persistent hunger from famine and shifting the political will and public opinion from inevitability, from it can't be done, to it can be done, and it's up to us. Now, through the committed actions, activism, and work of all of us around the world, what was once deemed impossible is now a codified global goal, ending hunger by 2030. And we've seen great progress. Today, the number of people living in hunger has gone from one in five to one in nine. <laughs> and because the Hunger Project is committed to the end of hunger, we are now leading the next level of enrollment and mobilizing action, bringing together like-minded organizations, enrolling governments, consolidating research, and joining forces with others to catalyze bold, transformative collaboration. Collaboration at scale so that entire nations can lift themselves up and out of hunger and poverty. So to prepare for this weekend, I've been reflecting on my own journey with the Hunger Project. I first learned about our organization 30 years ago through a friendly and, I should mention, attractive coworker. Now, I'm convinced that Dwight talked to me, you know, introduced me to the Hunger Project as a dating test. <laughs> it was a test. It was a test to see if I could be vulnerable to possibility. And I use these words, vulnerable and possibility, together very purposely tonight. Because vulnerability is at the very core of courage. Being fully present and really living life means allowing myself to fall into the center of my heart's fierce longing. A longing to make a difference, to make a contribution. And when standing for something as possible, holding it out there as really possible, when we do this with something that many, many people believe is impossible, we put our very selves at risk, exposed, and vulnerable. Facing into criticism, cynicism, ridicule, and resignation all around us can be like facing into a giant tidal wave. 
And it's precisely in this space of vulnerability that an uncommon courage emerges. An uncommon courage that fuels us to engage authentically and powerfully with people and the world around us in a shared possibility for our world. A possibility not yet obvious to all. I'm grateful to Dwight for the test. I fell heart, mind, and soul into the center of my longing. I fell in love with the vision, mission, and the people of the Hunger Project. And I fell in love with Dwight. We were married a few years later. So engaging in the Hunger Project together through our activism, our investment, and raising money from our friends and clients, some of you here tonight, has been a truly vulnerable and transformative experience. It's shaped our marriage, our work, our travel, our relationships with family, clients, and friends. And I truly believe that any person who chooses to connect with The Hunger Project has this type of transformative experience available to them. For many, there's a particular moment when their connection is so profound that they come away from it completely altered as a person. Some of you have heard the story of my own life-altering moment with The Hunger Project. In 2000, I went on an investor trip to Bangladesh to promote and celebrate the very first Girl Child Day. The trip was part of a bigger campaign to draw attention to the value of girl children. And so to stand in solidarity with our Bangladesh staff and volunteers, I joined the investor trip, taking with me my own girl child, Kristen, who was 16 at the time. During our visit to a village, I had time to sit with and connect with community members. I spent most of my time visiting with women, all mothers. I remember them telling me what they wanted most in their lives was for their lives to matter, to make a difference, and for their children, both boys and girls, to live safe and healthy lives. As we looked over at our children interacting with no shared language, they were connecting profoundly and simply. They were pointing at each other and giggling and smiling and over things like painted nails and different colors of hair color and comparing their pierced earrings. And we shared a proud parental moment together. While I was envisioning a bright future for my daughter, these women, these mothers, also wanted their children to be healthy and happy. I looked at the women and the men in the village with brand new eyes. These are my sisters, my brothers, my aunts, my uncles. All of us raising this next generation with hopes and concerns and challenges and dreams. And then when I looked back at my daughter, surrounded by so many little girls and boys, it struck me very deep in my heart, that those children, those children were my children too. It was a transformative moment for me, as a spiritual one really, where I experienced being one with all people, a mother to all children. That type of transformative moment is available to all of us when we connect with The Hunger Project. Tonight could be one of those moments for you. It's our intention that you have an opportunity to connect with our world in this deep and profound manner. My invitation to you here tonight is to connect with, really fall into the center of your own longing for our world. Connect with the men and women whose stories you hear tonight. Because tonight you'll hear from real leaders. Courageous people taking charge of their futures, facing daunting circumstances, centuries of marginalization, to lift themselves up and lead their communities up and out of poverty. I'll finish with a quote from our founder, Werner Erhardt. We can choose to be audacious enough to take responsibility for the entire human family. We can choose to make our love for the world be what our lives are really about. 
Each of us now has the opportunity, the privilege, to make a difference in creating a world that works for all of us. It will require courage, audacity, and heart. It's much more radical than a revolution. It's the beginning of a transformation of the quality of life on our planet. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, that's the opportunity for all of us. We are living in incredibly fierce times. How can you, how can I, show up, step in, engage with uncommon courage, and answer the call? Because the time is now. It always is. Thank you.